Good morning or afternoon. There is a full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn coming up this weekend and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what to expect for this full moon and how to plan for this full moon in particular. So if you have questions, leave them in the comment box and I will answer them. But for now, I wanted to give you a quick and dirty rundown on this full moon. So uh, this full moon is happening in the sign of Capricorn and it's happening fairly close to the lunar nodes so that means that it is also an eclipse uh, so this is a softer eclipse because um, the nodes are at 28 degrees of gemini and sagittarius and this lunation this full moon is happening at 13 degrees of capricorn so um that may be way over your, that may be too technical for you. Uh, all that means is that the nodes are much farther away than the moon. Um, they're kind of like at the, the maximum allowance of what would be necessary to call this an eclipse. Uh, so what that means in practical terms is that it's what I call a softer eclipse. It's not as dramatic. It's literally not as dramatic in the sky and the, um, the feelings that an eclipse uh, symbolizes versus a lunation in general, an eclipse tends to symbolize where things come in really hot and fast and where it feels like there's a lot of change very quickly, a lot of instability. Um, so this lunation, I think thankfully, I don't see that necessarily that like instability and quick change necessarily. Um, I think we could all use a little more stability and grounding in our lives right now. So um, the fact that this is in the sign of Capricorn does have more of a grounding kind of feeling tone to it. Now we do have Mars in the mix and, and we do have Uranus in the mix, so I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but what, uh, so this is happening to give you the exact timing it's happening on Saturday, July 4th at 9.44 p.m. Pacific time. So you'll need to alter that for your time zone. Uh, so Saturday or Sunday this weekend, depending on where you are in the world. And it's happening at 13 degrees of Capricorn, 13 degrees and 37 minutes. Uh, so we have the sun in Cancer, right? So Cancer Capricorn, the theme with these signs is uh, caretaking and having a sense of self, having a sense of responsibility in one's life, Capricorn, and then a sense of um, responsibility to one's own self and one's own emotions and being and um, caretaking, which is Cancer. So there's this equilibrium of finding this balance between taking care of yourself, Capricorn, and taking care of others, Cancer. Um, the the other so those themes may feel present for you especially depending on where you have these signs within your natal chart of course that will give you more information and if you have um, planets within either of these signs um, the other piece of this is that uh, mercury retrograde is in this conversation as well So uh, Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Cancer. It, during this lunation, it'll be at seven degrees of Cancer. So it's not necessarily exact um, to where I would be like, oh yeah, like Mercury is totally in, like in it, but it's close enough to where I'm like, oh, we need to consider Mercury retrograde uh, issues during this lunation. Um, so, uh, if you've watched my other video about Mercury ret retrograde, Mercury retrograde in Cancer during this time period is really about emotional processing. So it's about making sense of all of the things, all of the emotions, all of the data, all the information, but especially all of the feelings and your capacity to digest emotions. That's really what this is about. And we do this constantly, all the time, like every day, right? You're constantly digesting um, how it is that you feel about something and what to do with an emotion. And um, that happens consciously via talking something out or writing it out or talking with a friend or just kind of like um, 
thinking about something throughout the day. Uh, that's more conscious. The unconscious way of um, processing emotion happens through um, the storyline that's playing in the background that you're not aware of, and that can um, we can see that very clearly when um, someone has what's called like a Freudian slip, uh, something they don't realize that they're doing. It also happens through um, dreams and through um, active imagination, waking imagination, and it also happens very commonly through the body. So many times when we have an emotion that um, is too much too fast or it's just like overwhelming for our body for our psyche it will what's called somaticize in the body and that's a lot of times why we get tension um, if you feel unsettled and you uh, end up with a belly ache or a headache or muscle tension that is essentially um, very often somaticized emotion and so it's not bad but it just happens uh, so I think that's important to 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 keep in mind during this full moon, during this weekend, um, and really the entire Mercury retrograde period in general, but especially with the lunation because the moon is associated with the personal unconscious and the body. It's associated with these things of emotional processing. So uh, this weekend can be a fantastic time to do body work, whether that is just like getting some um, some moisturizer or some body oil and massaging that into your muscles, into your body, giving yourself like a nice um, self massage before or after the shower. That's one of my favorite things to do. It can just take you a few minutes and it, it works out some of those things. Um, this is especially important because the full moon tends to um, allow things to bubble up from the surface. Emotions tend to become um, either heightened or more apparent. They come up to the surface, they are seen like the light of the moon. Um, so I would say um, the other piece of this too, take a sip of coffee. And as I'm going through, whether you're watching with me now, hello, um, or if you're watching the replay, uh, if you have a question or a comment or something like that, feel free to leave that and I will answer those if I'm able. So, um, I always like to bring in the planetary condition because that informs um, how we may feel things and how things may be expressed. And if it's a challenging position, we can figure out what to do about that. So the moon in Capricorn is in the sign of its, uh, what's called its detriment. Now this is not bad, it's simply a technique that has been used in ancient astrology and it helps us work through things. So whenever a planet is in the sign opposite of the planet uh, whenever a planet is in the sign opposite of the sign that it rules it is in its detriment and that typically means that it has kind of a harder time expressing itself in a more full way so the moon rules the sign of cancer and the moon in this lunation is opposite the sign of cancer it's in capricorn so this means the moon is in its fall and this um tends to show where the emotional self has a harder time um, expressing emotions and feeling a sense of nurturing. Now, if you have this placement in your birth chart, if you're a Capricorn moon person, or just even during this moon, that does not mean that you necessarily have challenges um, emotionally processing, but it is a tendency. It is something where it shows like there can be kind of um, a need to for you to work extra hard and put in more effort at doing these kinds of things. Um, emotionality does not come naturally. <laughs> and uh, so for all of us this weekend, I think um, it's important to be patient with yourself and to know that it may feel um, a little bit more um, like you really have to um, put in the effort, Capricorn, put in the effort to emotionally process moon. Um, I also find that people that have the moon in Capricorn in their birth chart can be hard on themselves. They have a very high standard of what is expected of them. Um, 
a lot of times they perceive that as external expectation, but if we go deeper into it, it's usually an internal expectation and then it just gets projected out. So um, I say that because I want you to keep in mind again to, you know, we all get to feel this, we all get to feel what it's like to be a Capricorn moon person this weekend. So I want you to be um, gentle with yourself and even more than that, the more that you can set very specific expectations of yourself. Um, so be very specific about what it is that you want, what it is that's important to you, what it is that you, um, what it is that success means to you. Uh, so does that mean like, will you feel good about yourself if you do X, Y, and Z this weekend? And, um, you know, maybe you do none of those things and it's still okay. But I think that having a very, um, a very specific uh, standard that is based on your actions, not based on the outcome, that is the most helpful thing for Capricorn moon people in general and for all of us with this uh, full moon. Um, so let's see. The other piece of this too is that um, Mars is at four degrees of Aries during this lunation. So Mars is also in the mix there. And um, for those of you that took my Mercury retrograde class um, recently, you know that this is an important point within the Mercury retrograde cycle where Mars and Mercury are going to square. And as you know, this is also the case with this full moon as well because it's within that same kind of spectrum. Um, so I think that Mars adds a sense of oomph, a sense of initiative, a sense of passion that we can tap into. Of course, um, Moon Mars um, can show a sense of agitation or frustration. Um, the benefit here is that, again, with planetary condition, Mars is in its own sign. So it has a sense of dignity and an ability to lend its qualities in a way that is helpful. Um, and then there's also a trine to Uranus um, via this lunation. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm curious to see how everyone feels what, what happens because when there's an outer planet via trine to lunation, I see it as a softer aspect, something again that is not as dramatic. I would say um, it would be something that I would really pay attention to if you were already having a Uranus transit. That that is, I would be like, oh yeah, like let's consider Uranus in this equation. But if Uranus is not making a transit to your personal birth chart, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't include that in this interpretation necessarily. Um, and I have more to say, but if you guys have questions, let me know. Um, The other piece of this too is that I want us to keep in context where we're coming from. So um, we're coming out of uh, a Venus retrograde period as well. So that's within the context of what's happening. And um, we also want to keep in mind what's happening in your life right now as far as how all of these things um, might, might come up in your life. And um, so if... Uh, so yeah, so I it may be interesting for you to look back on the last couple of weeks and see what your takeaways were from the Venus retrograde period um, because that is something that has happened and that is something that um, very recently created a shift or a change or even if you just have some more internal insights. Um, I think that when when there's a transit, that is something that's very pivotal, especially Venus retrograde, we come out of it and it's not like, okay, done, I know everything that I need to know from this period. No, there's a sense of integrating. There's a sense of, um, there's the, the farther, okay, what I wanna say about this, okay, uh, the more space that we get from an experience, so the more time that has passed after something important has happened, the greater our ability to decode what that meant and to move forward from it 
in a way of better understanding. So, um, so Venus just stationed direct, let's see, last week, Wednesday last week, the 24th of June. So, um, so we're still making sense of this period. So that may be something interesting for you to muse on as well. I think that, um, would benefit you to like maybe look back through your calendar, or your journal and, um, you know, relationship issues, um, issues related to Gemini and where Gemini is in your chart because that's where Venus retrograde has been going. Um, I think that would be interesting to look at as well because again, we're looking at the context of your life and what's happening. Uh, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. <laughs> So the last piece of this that, that I'll leave you with is um, we always want to look, especially with lunations, where this is falling in your birth chart. So what houses are being activated and with a full moon we want to look at both the Capricorn house and the Cancer house. And when I say this I don't mean um, the 10th and the 4th unless that's where you have Cancer Capricorn. Um, ideally, you know or you have a copy of your chart somewhere that has um, your entire chart and it shows your rising sign and you can identify where Cancer Capricorn are. If you don't know that, um, leave me a comment. Even if you're just watching the replay, let me know what your rising sign is and I will tell you which house it is. Um, and you can, you know, just there's so much information online now. You can Google uh, that particular house and the symbols of that house. So this lunation happening um, with someone that has, let's say, Capricorn in the 12th house, that's going to feel very different from someone that has Capricorn in the 10th house. Um, and we wanna take into consideration, again, like what's happening in your life right now, um, but then also, and then blend that with that house. And a lot of times things make a lot of sense. Um, a lot of times, especially if you're following the lunar cycles, you'll notice that what you're feeling and what you're moving towards is already in alignment with what's happening in the astrology and it's really cool how it works out that way. Um, so again, if that's something that you want assistance with, let me know, leave me a comment. Um, I am hosting a full moon circle tomorrow evening, so it will be Thursday, uh, tomorrow the 2nd of July and it starts at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So there's still um, spots for that where um, I'll go through and we'll look at the chart. Um, we'll look at the chart together and then I also do individual readings uh, looking at where the lunation is falling in your chart and then also if there's any transits that you're having as well, we can speak to that because that of course is a part of the, the overall big picture. Um, so, I am wishing you a super wonderful full moon, sending you lots of love. Um, let me know how you're doing, what you're doing with this full moon, and um, just, yeah, sending you lots and lots of peace and love for this time period. <laughs>